Difficult to overrule. Very difficult. Let's have a look again. Well, we don't see it. Not really. Game and he serves his way out of trouble. And he's needed to. His serve is shielding him at the moment. But he's definitely no longer on top in this match, although by the scoreline he's winning it. Three all. New balls. That's better. The question for Enquist, one of the questions he has to ask himself is, do I want to play his forehand, which is so dangerous, as we see there, or do I want to play his backhand and get very little speed? That was really chip and hope. Yeah, very much so. Had it been uh, oh, a meter or a yard deeper, would have been a great approach. Oh, okay. Judgment again. Well, he's playing this point very well. Big forehand, and he decided as he hit it, he was going to come in because he felt good as he hit it. That was always trouble. But then, in the first set, he got away with a couple of those, didn't he? Because yeah. Inquist uh, either missed the passing shot or didn't hit a good enough one, and uh, Woodford hit the winning volley. I was going to say, Bob, but Enquist playing better now in this second set than the first, and that is generally true, but that was that was a shot of maybe 45 minutes ago. Yes, definitely. And it gives Woodford break point, and he would have a vice-like grip on this match now if he could take this. Uh, a little bit too heavy footed. Woodford, to get across to that one? Fourth double fault. Second break point. Yes. 
He's number six. Really gave that ball a whack. He was determined that he's going to win that point as cheaply as possible. Oh, good shooting. Last two shots to within what? Within an inch of the line. A little lucky, and he acknowledges that. He was all over the place, but in the end, it was the perfect shot. And Enquist comes out of his problems and edges in front again. But he had some fortune there, Bob. Definitely. And he needs it, let's, let's be honest. Uh, and you're going to, when you play a long match, uh, and we fully expect this to be a long match, uh, there's always uh, an element of luck in any number of shots. But one senses he's starting to feel better about himself. And if that's the case, then we really could be in for a long evening. And we also sense that uh, Woodford is maybe feeling a little bit less comfortable with his own play because he's not giving us the variety that he was given. One of those reasons might be the fact that he senses that his opponent is beginning to, to feel more comfortable and so therefore he's uh, maybe Woodford's going already to plan B but uh, I think it's a little bit early to go to plan B I think plan A was was still working and always had the chance that it was going to continue to work it's another late night another rainy night in Melbourne half past 11 now this is going into the uh, wee hours of the morning that's for sure Ace number eight. Well, tactically, nothing wrong with it. Going back behind his opponent, had it gone in, it would have created a lot of problems for Enquist, but it didn't go in. And his volleying percentage must be a worry for him. Because Mark is one of the best volleyers in the game. Not in the second set, though, he's not. You turn very much up the middle, but powerfully struck and very deep, and that always creates a problem. Yes, both players look a little edgy now, but here's a big point for Enquist. Break point, missed two, remember, in the fourth game. 
Well, he's got the ball deep, and here it's not a bad approach shot. It's it's been the shot that he's played often today, and gotten away with it. If I were he, I would think seriously about jamming Enquist on the forehand instead of going out wide. We got away with it. What a powerful attempt that was. We created all sorts of problems for Woodford. Yes. Ninth ace. Well played. But still, Bob, it's Woodford's serve that's keeping him upright in the second set. It certainly is, and he's putting himself under so much pressure because that, that game went six points the previous went 12 points the one before that went 14 points so he's really working hard on his serve Going for big forehands and uh, the forehand approach just not deep enough and also he was a little bit deep when he hit it. It wasn't far enough inside the baseline. But as normal for him, goes for a very, very big first serve, when, especially when he's down. Love it. Well, Woodford was after him in his last service game. He saved two break points and he's love 30 now. His fifth double, and they've all come at pretty bad times. And here are three break points for Woodford. If he gets one of them, he'll be serving for a two sets to love lead. Bold play. Well, he has to be bold. I, I think he's just not feeling comfortable enough with himself to to play his normal game. So he has to be a little bit more bold. But then he's always been bold in terms of the power of the serve, the power of the ground strokes. And you know he's going to go for a very big first serve here. Oh, it nearly worked for him. Ooh. Yes, he didn't have a prayer, really, did he, if that was on the line? No, if that's in, he's really in trouble. Third break point. It worked for him at the crucial time. At last, a forehand volley inside the line. Difficult to overrule. Very difficult. Let's have a look again. Well, we don't see it. Not really.
game would be. And he serves his way out of trouble. And he's needed to. Three all. New balls. That was really chip and hope. Yeah, very much so. Had it been uh, oh, a meter or a yard deeper, would have been a great approach. His serve is shielding him at the moment, but he's definitely no longer on top in this match, although by the scoreline he's winning it. That's better. The question for Enquist, one of the questions he has to ask himself is, do I want to play his forehand, which is so dangerous as we see there, or do I want to play his backhand and get very little speed? <laughs> 